Hello my lovelies, it's Zena, and today I want to show you how to solve this pizza problem. Imagine Emma invites infinitely many guests to a party and bakes a pizza for them. She promises her guests the following. The first guest gets one-fourth of the pizza. The second gets one-sixteenth. The third, one-sixty-fourth, and so on. So every guest receives a piece of the pizza. Will there be anything left for Emma? Well, that's an important question. If I throw a party and I make pizza for people, I want to know if I get anything off this pizza as well. So what happens here? She promises her guests the following, her infinitely many guests, very realistic. Uh, the first guest gets one fourth of the pizza. So she divides the pizza in four parts and the first guest gets one of these pieces. The second gets one sixteenth. So one sixteenth equals one fourth times one fourth. So he gets one fourth of what the first guest got. So the first guest got such a piece. So the second guest gets a fourth of such a piece. So we have to divide such a piece into four parts again. And the second guest gets one of these smaller pieces then. It's better if you come early. Um, so the third guest gets one sixty-fourth. So this is one fourth times one fourth times one fourth. So the third guest gets one fourth of what the second guest got. The second guest got this piece here. So if I want to have a fourth of this piece, I have to divide this piece into four pieces. And then the third guest gets one of these pieces and so on. So the pieces get smaller and smaller. But the question was, will there be anything left for Emma? And if we take a look at our picture here, it looks like there is a lot of stuff left for Emma. But how much is that? Well, let's calculate it. Um, let's see what the guests get first. The first one gets one fourth of the pizza. The second guest gets one sixteenth of the pizza. The third gets one sixty-fourth and so on for all infinitely many guests. We've already seen that we can write one sixteenth in terms of one fourth and the one sixty-fourth as well in terms of one fourth. So I would do that so that we have one fourth here then we add and instead of this I'm going to use this here so I write it as one fourth squared and then I add this part here which is this um, expression here so I write this as one fourth to the power of three and so on. So uh, I have to the power of two, to the power of three, to the power of four, and here at the beginning I have to the power of one. And I have a sum here. I have this, plus this, plus this, plus this. And it's an infinite sum. So I can write it with the sigma notation so that we get a better grasp on it. Um, I'm going to use the sigma notation, which is just a sum. And I have a pattern here, right? I have always one fourth in here. And then I start at to the power of one, to the power of two, to the power of three. So I have to make sure that my exponent changes starting at one. So I call it n. And I start with n equals one. And then I have infinitely many guests, so my sum goes up to infinity. So instead of this long sum, I can write it in this shorter version. And this expression here 
is actually a series. And it is even a special series. We have a geometric series here. Why is that? Because we have a geometric sequence in here. Why is that? Well, if we take a look at our sequence, we have 1 4th, 1 16th, 1 64th. So we get from one term of our sequence to the next by multiplying by 1 4th. And the same here. To get from one term to the next of our sequence, we have to multiply by 1 4th. And so on. So we multiply by the same factor each time, and that is the definition of a geometric sequence. So we have a geometric sequence in here, which makes this series a geometric series. Which is great, because we know some things about geometric series, and in the end we want to find the value of this sum here to know what the guests get, and then to find out what Emma uh, is left with then in the end. So let's take our geometric series. And what do we know about geometric series? Well, in general, if you have a geometric series that starts at 1 and goes up to infinity, and you have r to the power of n in here, then this series converges if this number in here, so the absolute value of this number, is smaller than 1. Is that the case? 1 fourth? Yes, this number is smaller than 1. So we know that our series here converges. And there is even a formula we can use to find the value of this sum here. And it looks like this. We have r over 1 minus r. It's important to notice that our sum here starts at 1. There is also another formula if your sum starts at 0. But in our case, we start at 1. That's why our formula looks like this. OK, let's apply the formula then. We have r, which is this number here. So it's the 1 fourth. Then we have 1 minus and r again, which is still our 1 fourth. And now we only have to calculate this expression here. So we have 1 fourth in the numerator. And here I want to subtract these numbers. I write this as a fraction as well. So we have 1 over 1, but we need the same denominators. So I multiply by 4 here and here, which gives me 4 over 4. And now I'm allowed to subtract. I have 4 minus 1, which equals 3, over my 4. And now let's divide. We have 1 over 4 divided by 3 over 4. We divide by multiplying by its reciprocal. So we multiply and switch these two numbers so that if we multiply, we can cancel the 4 out and we get a result of 1 third. So the guests get 1 third of the pizza, which means that 2 thirds of the pizza are left for Emma. If you liked my video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me a lot. I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care.